go and where did it come from, you know? Can I, can I, <laughs> was the real question. Make it go away, please. Because I can't stand it when it's going away. the ship running here before Henry gets here. Right? I mean, seriously, that's not working at all. <laughs> it's, why isn't this, yeah, there you go, that's a little bit better. <laughs> and I can't tell if you won't tell, then how can I tell that you're not telling me? It's very telling. How talented you are. It tells me a lot. Sometimes not. going to call in a few minutes, supposedly. We better do a musical number then. Oh my God. <laughs> Hurry. If we don't do it now, I don't think we'll get one done when he's here. You know what I mean, funky shit? <laughs> it's a simple song. About simple people. <laughs> That's what I mean.
I got my own computer. I was so psyched to explore a whole new world. I just don't feel normal. My friends are nice, but they just don't get me. I feel like such a weirdo! Where do you go to be understood? I found this online show. I can call in. I can express myself. Be on TV. Weirdos TV. Weirdos.com. Sometimes a stranger can be your best friend. Real time? What do you know about real time? I, I thought they, I, I was unaware if they were going to be post-processing effects. Or yeah, that's what everybody thinks. Time. But it's not, you don't understand. What you see going on here on the screen is just coming out of my mind directly. There's no, there's nothing to process. This is what is going on in my mind right now. You see? Really? That's it. And so I, can, I, I read your, uh, yeah. you said you were in the future, right? Distant, very, you're so far in my past that I couldn't, and I, I only remember the future. So it's not like I, I can't remember the past anyway. I have to yeah. predict, I can only predict what happens in the past because I live backwards, you see. So I, I oh, remember wow. the future. Do you remember the future? I do not remember the future. Oh, okay, I'm, just I'm checking. I get confused. Right Sometimes I think what I'm remembering is the past because it feels like the past to me because I'm remembering it, you know? Yeah. But it's not. It's, it's the future for you is what I yeah. remember. And I, don't, I have to predict what must have happened in the past based on the future that I can remember. That's how I do All right. it. That's how it works. So yeah. is this kind <laughs> of the... Um, <laughs> is this like the narrative that's being pushed throughout all the episodes. Of the oh, my God. Hold on. Uh, yeah, basically, this is what we say is really going on in the show, if, if something were mm. to be going on in the show. But wait, I'm trying to get you up video. Oh, there you are. Oh, no. Wow. I, better, I better come up with a better plan. So at this point, technology was starting to get there, and I could do it myself in, on a computer. And now, of course... You know, cut to 20 years later, it's super simple to yeah. do it. It's easier to do it on the computer than anywhere else. And the funny part was the whole time, everybody's like, oh, you're not a doing a real TV show. You're just on YouTube. And I was like, you know, I think YouTube has a future, and probably there will be <laughs> TV shows on YouTube. Yeah. And, of course, now YouTube is its own huge successful streaming service. You said you um, had a band. Have oh, you yeah. done music for a while? Oh, my whole life. Everything's... The, <laughs> right. Another way I could explain the show is I need to make... I want to make music, right? That's all I really care about is to make the music. Yeah. So, okay, again, if, if I'm not going to go to a club, right, some place where... I'm going to make you full screen here. If I'm not going to go to a club somewhere and perform the music for everybody... I'm trying to push the right buttons here. Oh, there we are. Now we got you full screen. Eh, wait, sort of. There we go. Nice. Much better. Wow. Nice red hair. Henry. Oh, thank you. And, and you know, it's funny. Henry, uh, Henry makes me think of O. Henry, the writer. Because I oh, kept yeah. going, O. Henry. And then I oh, thought, yeah. and then I thought, right, no, that's like in the David Bowie song. Suffragette City, he's talking to some guy named Henry. Henry! Henry! Henry. So it turns out Henry's this guy who, for some poor reason, can't afford the price of a train ticket from a place called Suffragette City. It's a shame. <laughs> okay, I managed, right. I managed to stop it from crashing. The ship always right. crashes. This is the point. So it's very dangerous. I'm flying around. 
I'm flying around and the ship is crashing. And then it crashes. But okay. Let's <laughs> try to get it under control. And then the band. Right. So the band I have now is virtual. It's virtual, but it's much more dependable. It doesn't mean it doesn't cause me any problems, though. Sometimes the band plays when I don't want them to and stuff like that. <laughs> like that. Yeah. But uh, mainly, they never get the notes wrong, right? I can just tell him, yeah, I tell the guitar player, just play something, you know? <laughs> and he always gets it right. And if I rehearse it so that I want him to play like this, he'll always play it just like that. It's really helpful. And I don't have to worry if he's going to make it to rehearsal. He'll be there. He starts a rehearsal. Yeah. Okay, when I point my finger at you, you play that drum beat that you made up. And then when I wink at the bass player, he, he should come in and play that thing that we talked about. Like, and so, so much easier with the computers. Just set up a bunch of shit and push the buttons. And who knows what'll happen. Yeah. And to me, that's, that's inspired by Pink Floyd. Because that's what, that's what I learned from Pink Floyd. It's like, just... Why is the Dark Side of the Moon so great? Because they were they were working with synthesizers for the first times in their lives. Synthesizers were brand new, and they were like, we have all the money in the world and best synthesizers in existence, which were crap at that point. What yeah. can we make them do? And the whole album is driven by what can you do with a synthesizer in 1973 and a yeah. guitar with the effects that were available in 1973. And that forms their sound. So now... I can do anything. I can do the effects from 1973, 1983, 1993, <laughs> or 2,000 yeah. and 50,000 million. So everything is possible. So that makes it a little more difficult, actually, because what am I going to choose if I can choose anything? It's like limited by... It's, it's not even limited. They're really... By the time we're talking about the limitations of the system... We must have gotten past all the choices that I could have made, which were endless. So if I can make endless choices, then right, there really is no limit to the choices. It's up to me to make good choices. And to me, that's yeah. what art is about. It's just about making interesting choices. And the, the, one of the things I was taught by one of my mentors, a guy named Keith Johnstone, is that if you think you're being clever as an artist, you're not. You're being so yeah. boring, and everybody's going to yawn and think you're so fucking pretentious. But if you do what you think is really obvious, glaringly boring and obvious, everybody's going to go, wow, I've never seen anything like that. That's so individual to you and your work. A and nobody believes that until they experience it. Yeah. But right, I've learned this the easy way. And it's amazing. I just do exactly what's in front of me, and everyone goes, I don't understand what you're doing, and why would you, how did you even think of that? And I'm like, how could I not? Yeah. It all makes sense to me, but sometimes other people watch it, and right away they get it. They see exactly what I'm doing and why, and other people can't fathom it, and other people hate it. Like, it's wrong. It's I've transgressed. Really? Well, there's a... There's a silliness to the show that I think people generally resent, that, that I'm relentlessly silly whether they want to talk about something serious or not. So I have had yeah. guests come on where they like, representing a, a cause, a charity, and they yeah. really wanted to tell everybody about, like, there was a guy who started going into a story about how he was abused sexually as a child. And this oh, is yeah. one of the few times that I actually cut something out it, it went out live. Yeah. It was broadcast live. I never, I would never edit the live stream. But when I, when I made the episode with this guest, I cut out the whole child sex abuse yeah. theme because I'm like, yeah, no, we don't, we don't. So people, I think people might not like that about the show in some sense that I never get serious. There are no issues to discuss. I'm not going to get political. I'm not going to talk about something topical. I don't want it to yeah. be stuck in time. I don't want to talk about who's the president right now or who we don't want to be the president next year. I'm not going to talk about that. This in the art. I want it to be, well, this is something I got from Monty Python. They were very topical, and I love that, but if, 
it, it's only bizarre to us as Americans because we don't know what was going on in Britain in 1969 and 1970. Yeah. So the Monty Python stuff looks like really so bizarre. But if you were living in London in 1969 at the time, it was actually just parodies of what you would see on television yeah. every night. So that's great. But I like the absurd part when you have no fucking clue what they're talking about, which does happen in Monty Python when they do like spot the loony and stuff like that yeah. or find the fish. Like That's the stuff I like. It doesn't make any fucking sense no matter what time you're from. And, and they started to hone in on that. And they realized that the topical stuff was limited in its appeal to people who actually knew what they were talking about, whereas the really bizarre goon show influenced stuff was timeless. And so, yeah, being timeless and trying to get that sense of if you tune into the show, it doesn't matter if you're watching an episode from 2011 or you're watching an episode from today. They're all basically the same thing. So you don't know. Is he, am I live? Am I broadcasting live right now while you're watching? Or no, no, this is from a long time ago. And it's really hard to tell. Like, yeah, I can tell whether I'm live or not, but it's hard for me to know when I look at the show whether this was an old episode or a new episode. I look for clues, but yeah, I don't really know. You know, I can't remember. I guess sometimes I'm like, well, it was probably been back in 2017 when I was sad that day. Sometimes oh, yeah. I can remember like how I was feeling and stuff. But other than that, yeah, it's all just blends for me too. And so it's the same show, and that's part of the part of the plot of the show. That nothing ever changes from my point of view. So that's to me, that's a big plot point. But I'm yeah. stuck. I'm stuck in this weird moment. It's always what it is, but never changes. And that's kind of a I'm obsessed with that idea because then I got into the idea that this is supposed to be a sustainable show, right? That I should be able to do when I'm 90 years old or a million years old and I shouldn't be like, oh my God, I'm not going to, I can't possibly do the show. It's too tiring. Well, it isn't. I just have to sit here and gab. So that's fine. Yeah. But, well, what happens if the show did get famous? And I was in that situation that some celebrities find themselves in, like Leonard Nimoy, where people are like, I don't want you to do the new thing that you're interested in. I only want you to do that thing you got famous for. Right. So if I get famous for this, great. If I have to do this forever and no one will ever let me do anything at all differently, perfect. Because this has been engineered to be everything I like, everything I love, everything that makes yeah. me really happy. So right, if I got the pleasure of being <laughs> forced to do this, there's no way there's no way it will ever not be pleasurable. So it's either fun or I don't do it. And then if someone wants to pay me someday, that that'd be great. That'd be nice. But probably it'll never happen. Yeah. I mean, you never know. You never know, and that's the point. But right, as a kid, you know, I was an artist. I was like, well, but I have to have to be famous. Right? I'm not important unless I'm famous. Is the way they teach it to you. But of course that's not true. Right? Yeah. You're important. What, first of all, why does anybody need to be important? Right? What's the point yeah. of that? Like, what's, what's, what are you going to get from your importance? And then the money is sometimes a trap. Because, oh, great, I'm making money doing this, which means I have to do it. Whether I like yeah. it or not. And if it doesn't keep making the money, they might not let me do it anymore. Right? Mm -hmm. Then I'm so I'm stuck and I'm beholden to some entity, maybe an entity I created myself, even if it was a company I created myself. If the company says, yeah, but if you do it differently and you fuck it up and nobody wants to watch it, we have to stop doing it. Well, that's never going to happen. Ever. So you just plan on doing this for like... Ever. Just, yeah, like ever. just having fun. Well, that's the point. It's so much fun that I can stop doing it if I ever want to, but I never want yeah. to. And I yeah. watch the show a lot. I watch my own show a lot, and I don't know. So I, I watch the stats on YouTube, so I know other people watch it, but I don't really yeah. care. I make it for myself. And this is all my mentors. All my mentors. I mean, when I was studying art, every single mentor said the same thing. They all said, don't worry about whether the audience likes it or not. Just make something you like. Paul McCartney says this. Everybody says the same thing. Don't make yeah. art for other people. Make it for yourself. And I'm like, well, 
I, I hear that that's a wonderful idea, but what if no one wants to pay me for art that I want to make exactly the way I want to make it? Then how will I continue to make the art? Because eventually, it, like if I need a theater or a venue and nobody shows up, they won't let me into the venue next time. So I used to want to own my own venue. And then I realized liability insurance. You don't want to own your yeah. own venue. It's a terrible idea. So this is a much better idea. Instead of owning a venue, I own a television network on yeah. the internet where anybody from anywhere in the world, I had a kid on from Liverpool one time and he couldn't, he couldn't talk too loud because he was in his bedroom and his parents were downstairs. Oh, yeah. And if they heard him, you know, he'd be in trouble because it was after his bedtime. But he yeah. was having a great time. He's one of my favorite guests. The, the, the episode is called Bananas Are Aliens. It's from like 2013 or whatever. And he was fantastic. The kid was totally on. He said some of the best stuff. He, and he had to keep his voice down. So this was a great constraint on him. He didn't want to say yeah. much. But every so often he would say like one word. And it was great. It was great. So the guests are, the guests are my favorite gonna, part. I'm going to check that out later. Oh, please. Titling the episodes is one of my favorite things. This is, this is another yeah. Frank Zappa. It gets even at his weirdest. And it's, it's amazing shit. It's really like the best. So Beefheart is a big influence on this show. And Gary Lucas is his guitarist. And I met him through Facebook and was like, oh, my God, I'm going to have the Captain Beefheart guitarist on the show. Like, wow, it's like the most famous person. My girlfriend's a little bit famous, but Lu Gary Lucas is real famous. And I was so excited. And he was great. He came on the show and he played guitar for me. But then I also helped him fix his computer. And he was a total pain in the ass trying to help him fix his computer. So now I never want to talk to him again, which is a shame. <laughs> What's wrong with this computer? Oh, he, he's cheap. He's, he's a cheap bastard. Now, he probably doesn't make a lot of money because he's not that famous, but he makes more money than I do. He tours the world, and he doesn't he didn't want to give up his, like, 2011 Mac laptop. So I did oh, my yeah. best to, like, get it working. I swapped out the battery for him and stuff, and I got it working. But, you know, he didn't want to pay me, which was fine, right? I wanted to do it as a fan and do him a solid, you know, as a great yeah. fan. But he made my life hell. He was calling me every five minutes. Hey, this application feels slow now. And I'm like, <laughs> dude, I'm not your tech support guy.